Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's discussion of Roe versus Wade being overturned and how that is going to affect healthcare providers and you if you receive healthcare, which is most of us going forward. So today, just to be super clear, we're not going to be arguing like, is this right? Is this wrong? I do have a video coming not on it. Is it right? Is it wrong? Uh, but more of just like my feelings on it and how they have changed after working in healthcare. So we're going to put that aside for today. Today, we're going to mostly be focusing on how this actually affects healthcare. And I want you to take away from it that what we can do. Okay. So our big thing that we're going to try to prove, I have a very dear friend, Rhonda, and she was like, oh, it's very helpful to have a goal that everyone can take away from a talk or anything like that. So our goal for today clarify the language surrounding abortion laws in your area so that there is less wiggle room within healthcare surrounding these topics. Okay. So that is what we're hopefully going to accomplish today. We're going to talk about different things of how this kind of does become murky for healthcare providers and how it all, it's just kind of rough and the way it's sitting right now is not good no matter how you feel about it. So we're going to dive into that and let's see if we can play a little intro. And then we're going to bring in nurse Scott, who is going to be joining me here today as a panel member. And we'll see where, where this discussion takes us. Feel free to comment this. I want these to be discussions, friends. I want this to be something we're all talking about together. Um, and as long as you're respectful, comment away, we don't have to agree on things. Okay. This is just a place to kind of discuss, get different people's opinions. We all have different backgrounds. That's the whole point of this. Remember, we're trying to make nurse, I was going to say nurse Liz tube. No, just nurse tube happen. Okay. I am working on a different intro. So stay tuned. <laughs> I was working on it forever and I, um, I, I'm not good at technology. Hello, nurse Scott. Um, so let us see. Oh, we have so many lovely people in the chat. Um, hello, Brianna, cooler heads prevail. Nurse Liz, will you cover endocrine disruptors? No, I, <laughs> I know almost nothing about that. Um, Beck Daniel, welcome. Glad you've been waiting for this. Mel, hello, hello. Um, Aaron Fritz, mama nurse. Hello. Hello. She says, sorry today. It's hubby's birthday. So I won't jump in with you. Happy birthday to hubby, but I will try to stay as long as I can. You're welcome. Um, for being here, mama nurse just put up some really good videos on, um, breastfeeding and Scott, I saw you put one up. I don't remember what it was about, but you can play uh, it. Writing right now. Papers. Can you say that one more time? Is writing, writing papers for grad school. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So we will have um, Nurse Scott's YouTube channel listed down below. Highly, highly recommend it. Scott, do you want to introduce yourself really quick just so everyone knows who you are? My name is Scott. I have the Nurse Scott YouTube channel. I was an emergency nurse for over 25 years, and now I'm not working because of a disability, but I'm going back to school to be a family nurse practitioner, and hopefully that'll be less physical than emergency nursing fighting with psych patients and lifting little old ladies There's and uh, yeah i hope so so um i don't have any special expertise in um this particular topic in abortions and all this but i certainly as any american have feelings <laughs> and thoughts so i'm i'm happy to participate and contribute so basically you want to be me when you grow up is yeah. what i'm hearing you say <laughs> <laughs> just kidding um i want to be one day probably as cool as you. Nurse Corky, hello. Um, let's see. Yep. Beck says whoop whoop from the ER for the win. Absolutely. Who said Kate? Hello. Um, who said Kate and I are like in the same internet. So that's always fun. I feel like she's my alter ego of the internet. Every live chat I'm in of other creators, like in weird spheres, she's there. So hello, my internet twin. All right. So let's get started with my, do you want to start with like kind of my, I'll start with my perspective of things of, things that make me nervous surrounding kind of the legislature of how it is a brief rundown of kind of where we're sitting. And then we'll open it up to all of you. If you have concerns, obviously, um, nurse Scott, any of your concerns that you kind of have, I want to turn the conversation. So the conversation mostly has been fighting back and forth of like, is over row got row versus Wade got overturned in the Supreme court in case you live under the world's mass, most massive rock, um, in the United States. So in the United States, 
um, Roe versus Wade had said that abortion is essentially legal. Um, and then Casey versus Planned Parenthood had come after that and said that, hey, you can do it up in term, until the term of viability. And then a recent court case came out and said, mm, actually, we're going to kind of get rid of all of that and give the deciding power back to the states. So instead of it being a countrywide protected something where, yes, you have the right to an abortion, it's a human a right. constitutional right. Exactly. Now it's going to be up to the state and your state can literally say no. So we're in this interesting place where a lot of states had, I think 13 of them had trigger laws that immediately came out and they said, hey, abortion is not allowed. Pretty much like life starts at conception. Anything that is going to cause this is not allowed. And then a lot of them use this terminology of unless the life of like the mother or the pregnant person is at risk. And that's the argument um, that a lot of people are having. They're like, well, this doesn't really, like, it doesn't count for ectopic pregnancies. It doesn't count for X, Y, and Z. And I hate the language surrounding uh, both kind of life begins at conception because I have a whole different video where we talked about that and how that kind of limits IVF and birth control. So we aren't going to dive terribly into that today just because it would be repetitive. But I do have that video that I'll link down below. Um, and But the thing that makes me nervous about as a healthcare, like as someone who prescribes medication and would be making the calls on these things is mostly to protect the life of the mother. I really, really want us as, I think it would be great if as a, a world, a whole United States to talk to our legislators and say, Hey, we need to define the wording on this. Okay. Because if you just come to me and you say, oh, well, if it's to protect the life of the mother, that's leaving, like, where do we draw the line with that? We need a concrete definition here because a lot of healthcare, it's not, it's gray, right? And so when you draw a line in the sand that is also gray, there's a lot of wiggle room of like, hey, if I have someone who's coming to me and says, I, or like I am having a mental health crisis. I need to no longer be pregnant because like being a pregnant is a huge trigger for me, blah, blah, blah. I'm having thoughts of harming myself, right? Do we count that? Is it just a physical thing? Is it just where it's like, oh, we can prove you have an ectopic pregnancy. I can prove that via an ultrasound versus you mentally feeling unwell. Like how do we prove that? What is too dangerous? What is the watch and wait period? When there are laws that are very gray, it leaves the door open for people to come in and try to come after you essentially. So the way a lot of like the criminal justice system and everything works is you have to have someone like a prosecutor who wants to come in and try to take the case, right? Who comes in and says, I'm going to go after this. Normally, I don't think most people are going to have someone come after them if they are doing a um, ending of a pregnancy for an ectopic pregnancy or uh, you know something along those lines but what if you had someone who was really disgruntled and something had gone really wrong or it was someone that they know and then they decide they're going to go in and then prosecute it but and all the law says is the life's uh the pregnant person's life was at risk and they could be like no you could have just watched it and waited because people don't know who are in the law like you know what i mean then it becomes a lawyer's game and it's like well what if you just get a team of people who all are in on it and are like yeah let's just pass this through it's not a hard line and we need hard lines um scott any thoughts yeah it's just very confusing i've thought about the same things it's like when is the person's life in danger is it have to be an immediate danger or like in the case of an ectopic mm -hmm. um this in my video on the topic i said you know do we really have to say to these people i'm sorry ma'am due to the state law you um you know we can't do anything right now but you have an ectopic pregnancy so just to let you know what to expect um you're gonna have some abdominal pain probably like you know a few hours maybe another day and um eventually you by the way you will start bleeding internally and um, when you've lost enough blood then that your blood pressure starts to drop we call that shock and then we can go in mm -hmm. and, and the then it's life threatening. Yeah. I mean, yeah. is that realistic to think that people are going to do that? And even if that's not the intent of the law, that may be the effect. Or the effect really is that practitioners, the physicians, the OBs, the surgeons, they don't know. And do they want to take the risk of acting when they think it could be interpreted as being in violation of the law? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 
and I'll tell you as someone who does prescribe and do procedures and things like that, you are much more hesitant, um, especially if you live in states that would be, which are usually going to be the states anyway that are going to be pretty litigious about this. You can, you're going to err on the side of like caution, right? And this is when patients start getting tossed around to a ton of different people because everyone, when the law is gray, you're like, oh, like I'm actually going to have this person take it or like I'm going to have this person take it because you don't want to touch any of that stuff with like a 12 foot pole. However, if it said, you know, if we outlined in these laws, like this is acceptable, this is not, um, even if it's, not going to be a situation that like I would necessarily agree with like um, going forward, like at least it would be written down and we would have a better idea. And I think it would make people think about things more. Hey, is getting rid of an embryo that is fertilized. So technically it has had conception is getting rid of that embryo. Is that okay? Or is that not okay? You know, that's going to influence IVF. What about forms of birth control that could, um, you know, the primary method of most birth controls is avoiding laying an egg as I call it. Um, so if you don't ovulate, you aren't going to get pregnant, but a backup method of that, even though it's not the primary one is even if it does, you do have conception, it can't implant. So like, is that okay? Is that not okay? How do we feel about that going forward? There's no guidance on it. And I'm just, it makes me nervous. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't. You know, I agree with um, CK Medic, who said he hates that the politicians are putting themselves in the middle of this. You know, this kind of thing used to be a matter of the patient and the physician deciding what's right and appropriate and safe for that patient. And if some doctor, nurse practitioner, PA makes some kind of treatment decision that's unethical or dangerous, that was taken up then with the, the licensing board for the state mm -hmm. and on ethics, you know, or practice, you know, malpractice or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. could be, if there's damage, they could be sued for malpractice. But they're, the fact that politicians are inserting themselves into these decisions, you know, and, and, and he's right, you know, he or she is right. You know, you just, they don't have any medical background at all. As I think you pointed out in your last video, you know, some of the language they use or, whatever. Or wasn't there one that like required implant re-implantation of the ectopic pregnancy into another woman? It's like, that doesn't exist. Yeah. I've seen, that was. Yeah. I've seen things of real. that, like when this, like that currently doesn't exist, but like when it does, like, we'll just do that. And it's like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think legislators have said like, you know, why can't we do this? I've gotten a lot of comments like that as if like I am personally responsible for it. They're like, we've come up with so many other medical interventions. Like how have we, how have you not figured out how to reimplant this? I was like in my spare time, <laughs> that's not something I've been able like, to dedicate to. So there's just a huge lack, I think of understanding of what this actually practically means. Cause healthcare providers are going to protect their license, right? So they're going to start to back away from things that make it nervous. I've seen a ton of people who, um, I used to work in GI liver as a nurse and we had a lot of people with, um, different rheumatologic diseases, like Crohn's disease, things like that. And they took methotrexate as a, which is like a chemo pretty much, uh, to control their symptoms because their body was attacking itself. And now I've seen people, I've talked to people on that unit that said some people are having a hard time getting it because it is also an abortive medication. And so they're saying, well, technically, like if we give, like, you can't really be on this because, you know, how are we going to prove that you're not pregnant? And then it, they live in a state like where it's like, oh, well, that's not allowed. So since you can reproduce technically, now you can't have it, which is just like absurd. And I don't think that's probably the norm. Um, and I don't want to feed into that narrative of just like wild speculation because I don't think that's helpful. But I have heard of cases where it does happen. And I think we're going to keep seeing things like this happen because people are scared. I know I would do, I, I'm very for my patients, but it would scare me if you were like, mm, like you might take my license over this. Like, I'm proud. And then you can't help the patients. It's one mm -hmm. thing to say that for your patient, but are you willing to go to jail for it? Because exactly. if you, jail, you can't exactly. help anybody else. Where it's treated like murder. Person, you know? Yeah, because then it's yeah. treated like murder. It's not just like a slap on the wrist. Oh, here's your license. It's like, oh, you are going to go to jail. Yeah. Um, 
mom and nurse said, I fear that doctors will have a fear uh, about being honest about the risk to mothers as far as repercussions that will come along with it. Um, she is a trauma ICU nurse. So that is her like background with it. Um, and yeah, I agree about the risks of the mother, like about the conditions that they currently have. Is that what you're talking about, Vanessa? Um, because I think that is going to be a rough conversation from if you were coming to me and I was saying, Hey, I can't really do anything about this. Or like, Oh, you have, um, you know, this condition that, Hey, we probably could fix, but you can't really be on that medicine because you're pregnant. And like, what if it ended it? Um, like, is that even going to bleed over into other things like taking, you know, medications, some medications, you know, we say this is like mostly fine. Like, and then in some rare studies, it shows that if you take this med, that's mostly fine. Like in the first trimester, it does have a slight increase of, um, having a miscarriage. So what are we going to stop giving all of those? Like otherwise very benign medicines that just happen to like mildly increase your heart rate, which is usually the mechanism behind it because we are terrified that what if that did cause a miscarriage is someone going to come after me and be like, Oh, this did this like, which sounds very, what if a prescriber decided to go ahead and say, well, you need this medicine. There's a chance yes. you miscarry, but I know you're not really wanting this pregnancy anyway. Let's go ahead and give it to you. And mm -hmm. if you miscarry, you miscarry. Um, then what kind of trouble will that prescriber get into yeah. doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't yeah. intended to end the pregnancy, but they knew it could, but they thought the benefits outweighed the risk, especially with an unwanted pregnancy. So, yeah, yeah, it's it gets absolutely hairy real quick wild, which is why. So we're just going to keep inserting this. The goal of this conversation is just so you know, and I will try to find how to contact your legislators below that you, we just want you to contact your legislators, to, no matter how you feel about abortion laws being in place. Okay. Because that's the situation that we're in right now. So there's honestly no point in arguing about it. Um, but we need better laws that actually specify. Providers know what they can do and what they can't do because otherwise they're just going to stop and back up and do less and less and less and less and less because we're scared and that's not good. So you know, hey Liz, when you put that card up, your audio stops. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just keep talking. So. I know. <laughs> well, that's we very good to know. That's yeah, helpful. When it's up, it Thank preempts your audience. You know, every time I try to add something fancy, it comes and it backfires at me. And it's like, you it's know, larger, you know, you didn't want that. Also, it goes very fast. I don't know why it goes so fast. It's fine. Yeah. We're a work in progress. There are settings somewhere to fiddle with later. There probably are. Um, Brittany McDonald, um, thank you for being a channel member. Also, CK Medic, thank you for being a channel member. If you want to become a channel member, uh, shameless plug, you can do that in the link below or I think on the screen. So happy to catch a live. I work in the NICU and I'm so scared for what's to come. Um, Brittany, if you ever want to come on here and if you want to hop on the live today and talk about what the, you think of this as a NICU perspective, um, just comment and I'll send you the link um, because I think that would be interesting from that in the NICU, you're going to see all sorts of, I think that's just going to be its own very difficult time. If we are having pregnancies that otherwise we might have compassionately ended. Um, and now these babies are going to be born only so that they are not going to survive. But that's not the huge topic of today. But if you do want to hop on, Brittany, let me know. Um, kind of reminds me of a comment I made, and it may be off topic, but not all the conservatives and pro-life people are white supremacists, but I'm <laughs> guessing the white supremacists are also very conservative on this issue. And we know that it's going to be the black and brown and the poor white women who don't have access to abortion care. They, they won't be able to travel to another state or if it comes to it, to another country. So I think what these legislators did not um, did not foresee is a black and brown baby boom. And I mean, the like conservatives, that's not an issue, but the small part that are white, white supremacists um, probably aren't happy with that. Wouldn't be happy with that. So, so in like 18 years, who knows how they're going to, are they going to go, you know, I thought about that too. In 18 years, you're going to have a lot. We're going to have a powerful baby. little force of, yeah. I just think the whole implication of it is, yeah, it's. I get it. You know, I'll explain this because my family is, 
um, again, maybe off topic. My family is pro-life. They mm -hmm. live in the Midwest. As is and, um, I was just talking to my mom recently again about this. And I said, I, I understand where you're coming from. When a woman gets pregnant, you don't want her to have a get out of jail free card in the form of an abortion. You figure, mm -hmm. hey, look, you got pregnant. You're going to have to have the baby. You don't get, there's no, there's no mulligans here. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what you don't realize is all these other, the way that law has tentacles that run out through everything else. You ban that. You also create these ethical dilemmas for women with um, ectopic, pre ectopic pregnancies or who need psych meds or mm -hmm. all the stuff that we're talking about today. And my mom's answer was actually pretty wise. She said, you know, well, why don't they just legislate for what they mean? Why don't they say what they mean? Exactly. Like, if you get pregnant, you don't get, get out of jail free, you know, but that all these other things are not. In, and I said, you know, you're right. And, and it like, exactly like you had said earlier, it comes down to the people who are making these laws and these decisions have never been in the room with people have never like they have no concept of what they're actually doing. Um, and so that's like, and we can talk about that today. That's what I have a video coming out of. My whole family is also very pro-life. Um, I'm very pro-choice. I used to be very pro-life and I have like taken baby steps over the last 15 ish years to get to the point where I'm like, Oh my gosh, like my bubble is burst. I, was very, I lived in a beautiful bubble when I was very pro-life and very like, I just had not seen the things that I had seen. And now we kind of got over here. Um, and I feel like everything is so angry. Like you can't even have conversations with people and be like, Oh, like, I think, you know, let's have a conversation about this so that we can actually discuss it. Um, but I think a lot of people, when you start talking about, this is why I wanted to make this video was like, let's talk about the actual legal side of this. Even if you are very anti-abortion, like, I don't think you want, most of you probably don't want IVF to be taken away or for more people to die of ectopic pregnancies or to have horrible outcomes because people are so scared that they're going to go to jail for providing these services. Um, who said In the of full disclosure, my journey's kind of been back and forth. I mm -hmm. started out going to Catholic school. I remember actually being in a pro-life march, like don't kill babies when I was in grade school. And then as I got older and more liberal and became college educated and especially moving to California, I became much more liberal, like women have the right to abortion, you know, and life doesn't necessarily begin. We all have different ideas about when life begins. And so we can't legislate on it. It's a philosophical thing. You can't mm -hmm. legislate on that. That's up to each, each individual person's conscience. And I've kind of kind of gone back and forth. I now live in the liberal bubble of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. and, um, I still have, you know, some roots back in the Midwest. So, you know, to be honest, my position is I don't know when life starts. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm probably not going to do those procedures as a nurse practitioner because that's in that gray area I don't want to step into. Doesn't mean I won't advise my patients, you know, where to find abortion services if that's what they want. But for me, I don't think it's right for me to do that. Although recently I'm so mad about this whole thing, I kind of feel like I should, because there's gonna yeah. be so many women in need and the, the providers that do provide that service are gonna be overwhelmed. I kind of feel like, well, maybe I should chip in when when I'm qualified to do that. But I don't even know if nurse practitioners are allowed to do that. They are in some states, yeah. Are you okay? I was gonna say in North Carolina, you couldn't touch that with like a ten foot pole. But mm -hmm. I would even be nervous as I have counseled countless patients um, surrounding abortion and what their options are when they become pregnant. Um, Cause that was something I always, I ran into a lot of people who became, I mean, over half of babies are not exactly planned. And so I ran into countless times where we were screening for something totally different. And I was like, Oh, like, <laughs> um, so, you know, how do you feel about this? And then you have that conversation, but I would be much more hesitant to have that conversation now if I thought, oh, in the back of my mind, like I could go to jail for even being associated with this. And, and that's not just healthcare workers. You know, some of these states say anybody that assists in any way a woman having a, obtaining an abortion is guilty of a, you know, class A felony or whatever it is. So, I mean, I have my family back in Missouri, which is like the most strict and Missouri's state. Missouri's going hardcore. They're going hardcore. So if my niece says, hey, Uncle Scotty, I don't want the rest of the family to know, but I know you're a nurse and I got pregnant and I don't know what to do. There's just no way. And I say, am I supposed to say, we can't talk about this. Exactly. Or Even I'm over the phone or whatever in California, we can't talk about this because you're in Missouri. Would you go across the river to Illinois and call me back? Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's like, and how do you ethically sit there 
and not say anything when you know it like yeah. especially if you're someone's primary care provider right like they trust you you're they're coming to you and it's like oh, how does that even work and who said kate um brought up a good point where the elite will always find law, uh, ways around the law and i think that's where this really comes into like this is going to affect people that do not have access to the resources in order to leave the state to make the different rules in I can't tell you how one of the interesting things about working in family medicine I found was I took care of families and I had many patients where um, their parent was quite active in the community, very anti-abortion, um, but their children had had one or they had had one. And I knew that I was never going to say anything about that, but they will find a way to be able to do it. And it's the people who can't afford to leave, who don't have transportation, who are going to be the most effective, affected by it. And so it just, it does, oh, that's like what really gets me. Mm. But you do see these organizations and even states trying to, especially California, we're trying to make, uh, create a like abortion sanctuary state and have programs where we will try to support women who need to come to California to receive abortion care. And I don't know if everybody saw Governor Newsom is uh, of California is running for re-election and he's running an ad in Florida of all places just to kind of jab at them and say, hey, you know, things are tough all over. And I know they're attacking, you know, don't say gay and abortion rights, but um, we still believe in freedom in California and you can come on over if you want to. And I just imagine ads going out to Missouri saying, hey, we understand you know, and it wouldn't be on local news because that would be somehow against state law, but like a national ad campaign, you know, that says, hey, you know, California is here and we're we're compassionate and we'll even maybe help you fly to California to get a boy. And I'm just wondering if all these people who wanted this decision are ready to have those ads pop up on their TVs and have their kids see these ads going, if you need abortion services, come to get mommy, what's abortion? And then <laughs> they go through all that. I think yeah. there's all kinds of things that are going to happen. We, we don't even know about now. Yeah. And that's a good, like also a very good point about the ripple effects that they're not really thinking about, um, going on down the line of yikes. Um, let me see. I saw, uh, JB says she's a women's health or they're a women's health nurse practitioner. I'm super nervous about all this. If you want to clarify JB, what makes you the most nervous from a women's health perspective, that would be incredibly, um, helpful. I know from mine, it was just, I had a lot of people that I ran into that would come in and that were very early in their pregnancy, but I never saw, I saw very rarely people who came in with like mid like pregnancy complications. Um, but I'm sure that you've seen that working in where you work. Um, and Stasia said the biggest ones that cross my mind is antidepressants. Most aren't safe for pregnancy, but what happens if the woman is, um, thinking of, exiting mental health is huge right now and we have to just use youtube language otherwise they get angry um that's the biggest one like one of the biggest ones for me um the thing with antidepressants though is most of the time antidepressants will not end a pregnancy they will damage the developing fetus um which is then difficult. And this is a huge reason why I have had patients that ended up terminating a pregnancy because they were not in a mental place where they could come off of their medicine. And it was really not recommended to continue either. It was going to worsen their mental state because they were already like at their limit. And do we really want someone who's at their limit to then go through a pregnancy? Like how healthy is that really going to be for either? Um, but with this, it really doesn't like what a there's no law in place to say, well, then you have to come off of it. So now we're going to have a whole generation of people. Again, this just needs to be clarified in there. Like this is to me, this would be life threatening. If I take you off of this medicine, or if you are already currently thinking of taking the forever leaving route to me, that's life threatening. Is that life threatening to you? That's why we need legislation. I'll stop talking this time while it goes through. We need legislation to clarify what this means. Does this apply to mental health? What does this apply to specifically? Because you're right. There are very few mental health medicines that you can stay on. A lot of times they'll get you through if you're on something like 
if you are on any kind of antipsychotic and you don't want to end the pregnancy and you cannot come off of it, like we've tried that before and it didn't work, you, they, you, you can get there um, and then you kind of deal with what happens later. Like, hopefully it's not so bad. You know, you always hear about like things where it ends up where the, you know, pregnant person was on like all sorts of things and the baby was fine. I've seen it not be fine, but it doesn't usually end it. And so that's, again, something that's not clarified in the law is mental health. And I think it should be. You know, someone in the chat, I think, may be trying to be a troll, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Says your mental state isn't a, an excuse to kill a kid. That's what that's what these are. They are ethical dilemmas, where there is no one right answer, and maybe there's only two wrong answers. In one case, the pregnancy is ended. In the other case, the woman ends her own life. So, which weighs heavily? Which weighs more heavily than the other? And what are the options? How can we find more options than we're thinking about right now? All that is the process mm -hmm. that you have to go through in making those kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. And you may come down just where you say that the life of this fetus is more important than the woman's mental health, but you may also not, depending on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's why this is also sticky. Yeah. And we need to have that. I obviously very much disagree with this, of this person's perspective, but like, if that's what you want, then you need to go out and vote for that so that it's clarified so that it is in writing that says mental health is not a reason to like we still the, that is not a, that's not a go you need to continue with the pregnancy and then if something horrible does happen people can't come back and sue the healthcare provider who did not intervene for the sake of the pregnant person who is now no longer here which would mean most likely that the baby the fetus, whatever you want to call it, is not also here, right? Um, so it's not, again, that's just the gray area and it is not. I think the point is that there are people that feel like that, that mm -hmm. nothing trumps, pardon the term, bringing that baby to full term. There's no reason at all that imaginable and that's fine. But in the what's happening now is that women and pregnant people and their doctors and their families aren't allowed to make that choice. They're having it made for them. Exactly. So just come out like even if if that's what that's why I was trying to say like even if you do like if you're all about not having abortion, if you think you should not have it, that needs to be specified because it's not fair to just be like no, it's bad and then it's pushing all of the responsibility on people who did not make this law which is healthcare providers and all of you, everyone who's experiencing healthcare to try to waddle through this mucky mess of like, then what is okay? Legal people who made this decision, like people in the Supreme Court are not the ones going to jail when they do a cert or like perform something of that all of a sudden is going to be attacked and everything, you know what I mean? So like, it's not them that have to deal with it the legal legislators, they don't have to deal with the repercussions of it. So that's why I want to get people to, no matter how you feel, we just need clarification because right now the law literally says like, uh, protect life from conception going forward. If you don't, it's murder. Or like if you're aiding in doing anything that alters a pregnancy, it's murder. Unless the life of the mother is at risk, which is like the most open-ended poorly defined, a poorly defined thing ever. And you know, if you know any healthcare people, you know that we love algorithms that are very black and white. We don't want to be told like, go with what your heart says. Like, you know what I mean? No, I want you to tell me exactly how to treat this heart attack. Like right now I need an algorithm with choices and this is not, we don't have that. Um, CK Medic said there's a significantly increased risk of postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis in moms with mental illness. Going on and off psych meds is not a simple risk-free choice. Exactly. Um, and being pregnant anyway is a risk. Like your mental health is usually like some people are great with it, but like mine was in the toilet <laughs> because you have so many hormones and you're stressed and like, yeah, flipping on and off with it. That's not good. It's just, yeah. Just to clarify, um, more options is the goal. More options isn't just the goal in and of itself. It's just that when you have a situation where there are no clear right answers and you think, well, but what if we do this? Maybe that's better. What if we do that? And when I say more options is maybe there's other we could do's that you haven't thought about yet that would be better than the we could do's that we're thinking about now. Mm 
it's not just having more options for more options sake it's to give you is to potentially find the the best imperfect solution for an ethical uh dilemma mm -hmm. yeah for real. Um, and Betsy said, um, this is new to everyone. We'll have to reevaluate and how we can help these people um, choose life in a different comment. She said she was 100% pro-life, except in the case of the mother's life. And I agree. That's just why I wanted to make this to be like, hey, this is new. But what we have right now is not working. <laughs> we can't just, you can't come out with a law that's written like that, especially like states like Missouri. They just like left the door open. They're like, yep, don't do this. Okay, bye. Like, I'll be back in a few months when like session is back in. And it was like, um, what? Like, <laughs> you, you can't leave it like that. <laughs> Please come back and, and clarify this. Um, Beck said more options equals suitable options for everyone who needs them. Yeah of just giving yeah at least got to spell it out and make it so that there are options um, and i'm talking about options when you're considering one case one pregnant person and what and who who needs this but that could harm the pregnancy but ending the pregnancy is against the law that one situation you look for options like well what if you go to a different medication what if you do this what if you wait what if you what not options for everybody mm -hmm. i'm talking about when you're you know considering a, a medical ethical issue with one patient, you want to try to find as many options as you can. Just to clarify. Thanks. Yeah. And Melody, um, thanks for being a member, um, said having an exit plan is a threat to life, uh, to the life of the mother. Intentionally taking one's life is real. Um, and the numbers are skyrocketing. And I would imagine like this, I think we're unfortunately going to see an increase in this um, of I have had patients tell me that, especially when they're very young, um, that this is something that they are going to, you know, if, if they can't get one, then they probably won't be here either. Um, very seriously. I have had friends who have had that sentiment, um, usually younger. It is like, and that is where I think that's like I had said, that's my biggest concern with it is that the mental health aspect of it is not clearly outlined. Um, I think most other people could probably argue in court pretty well uh, that, hey, um, but even like ectopic pregnancy, like how long do we wait? You know what I mean? Do you wait until, yes, you have ruptured and now you have this horrible Shocking. thing happening? Exactly. And someone else had mentioned earlier that worked in um, labor and delivery about shock. Um, you know, if you have a premature rupture of membrane incredibly early on in your pregnancy, uh, so if uh, what that basically is, is um, if your water breaks, so there's a tear in the sac and you're so early that you, and you can't induce labor yet, um, that baby is not viable they might try to keep you pregnant. Um, but the risk then is that infection can get in there, right? Cause it's not in this little bubble anymore. And someone had been saying that they've seen people. Um, okay. Boho. Um, Boho. Thanks for always being in chat too. You're always like a great, uh, chat member. Um, I'm in, if you want to be a moderator, let me know. Um, I trust you. I feel like we know each other. You've commented like 12 times and I'm like, yeah, I, I trust you with my channel. It's fine. It is um, Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm an OB and I remember a patient who was septic and super early viable. Um, so this is even like super early viable. So probably like 22 weeks. We had to do a DNE, which is when you go in and I forget what they, what the DNE actually stands for. Dilation, um, dilation and evacuation, I think. Yes. That's not right. Um, because neither of them would have made it. They may have had sepsis from a prolonged premature rupture of membrane. Um, and so this is another case where you are ending a pregnancy that is really not quite yet viable, like 21, 22 weeks, because if not, it is going, it, you are septic. That infection that got in there is going to kill you. So how long do we wait? Um, you know, do we wait until your blood pressure tanks? Um, kind of like Scott was saying earlier, like, do we wait until you are full septic or do we just kind of watch and say like, oh, your white blood cell count is going up. We clearly see there's an infection here. Where is, 
where is that line that gets very, very murky? That's a question for the jury to decide. Exactly. And I don't want to leave it up to a jury. If that's my oh, license, ridiculous. Like, heck no. Like that is when I'm like, I am leaving this hospital. I need to go take a month vacation. I'm not gonna, um, no. Um, and Jay said the same thing I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Says, yeah, I just want to work in a state as a nurse that, or it's legal, because I'd feel terrible for not providing comprehensive care. And that's the situation exactly. I find myself in. Mm -hmm. so I need to be an FNP. What am I going to do if I can? And if it goes even further and there's no, um, either there's a national ban, if the Republicans get back in control and pass a national ban, or if they go after contraception, what am I going to do with my women patients who come to me and I can't give them what I think is basic health care is, mm -hmm. is contraception. I'm going to tell them what? I'm going to teach them the rhythm method and how to pull out. Yeah. I mean, that's all that's left. Or, yeah. You know. Yeah. And at the it, same time. It's frustrating for me. I mean, I'm not going to oh, be focusing sure. on women's health. But if I do family practice, if I do, you know, primary care, I will have oh, people in my, in my practice, you know, people that I see who have uteruses and are old enough and young enough to reproduce. So it's terribly frustrating. And that's why I kind of, I'm here. I'm hoping to hear maybe from Liz or from the, the women's health nurse practitioner that chatted earlier or anyone who knows, like, how do you square that in your mind? How do you, how do you give them the best care when your hands are tied on certain things? Yeah, exactly. And I don't know, like, I don't know either. I was thinking well, like, what good are you? Then? I, I'm really none. I'm not good at all. You probably don't want to be me when you grow up now. So <laughs> I've squandered that. Um, I don't know because I have always been able to give people options like um, have a very like I don't I don't know in Pennsylvania like the state I live in now if I wanted to go back to practice their law is what they're trying to push through is the same garbage of so open ended just like well you know as long as it's like try not to you know let the court we'll leave it up to some lawyer eventually um, yeah and new personnel. Um, Goodbye. You're repeating fear mongering. Pro life doctors have no trouble, but this whole thing is fear mongering. And that's what I'm trying not to do. So if it comes off as fear mongering, that's not my intention. I think there is a lot of fear mongering on the internet. And that's what I'm trying to like not be the person who's like, this is all happening. Like, yeah. I'm trying to be a more so rational. Fear mongering is they're coming after all our licenses. Beware. Oh, end of exactly. day. Exactly. Exactly. What like, we're trying to do is say there are real concerns and real dilemmas that that providers are going to find themselves in and we should talk about it before it happens and maybe mm -hmm. we can change some things before it gets out of hand by you want to run the card talking to your legislator <laughs> yeah yeah yes let's run our card go talk to your legislator define the law ready all right next time i need to add music to that because otherwise we're just sitting there like mm. i think it's about that we can hum along yeah, we need a little longer um, sound effect. Um, thanks for attempting to be more balanced. Have a nice day. Yeah, you have a nice day too. Um, it's hard. People have very strong feelings about this. And I'm not saying to troll a chat is, is right, but you know we have to recognize that there are pro-life doctors and there are pro-life patients and they feel very strongly about this. And we have to, be, we have to provide care to them too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Aaron said, I'm finding that people who call this fear mongering are people who don't have to deal directly with the consequences of this. Yeah. And I think I have um, pro-life, very pro-life family members who have expressed concerns over the same thing. This has been something we've been able to like unify about is this is not well defined, like who are, and there are people who are very much like, hey, yeah, when, as soon as this takes a turn and it starts to look like an ectopic, do it. Um, as soon as this takes, you know, um, mental health is an iffy one, um, but hey, if you're septic, go, you know, obviously like this is something we're gonna pursue. So it's, I think it is going to affect pro-life healthcare providers. Like even if, I don't know, you're really healthcare providers shouldn't be dabbling in like yes you can say i'm not going to perform abortions but like it, if it when it was legal if it is legal in your state it's pretty unethical to like just pretend it doesn't exist if that's something your patients want because it's not really it's your job to provide all the options but that's a different side tangent um the no. said, can i can i 
providing examples, providers are super concerned. It's not fear mongering. Exactly. It's kind of like a gaslighty response to be like, oh, your concerns, those are not real. <laughs> those, are, those are not real. What can, I pick, say? can I pick one? Mm -hmm. uh, Hashimara Senju was saying, as a pro-life nurse, having a DNA is acceptable, but statistically 99.5 of abortion is done out of convenience, not rape, incest, or problems for the woman or baby. And to me, that brings up the issue that you can be a pro-life nurse, doctor, obstetrician, any of these things, but you can't let that color your understanding of what your patient is going through. So in this case, what sticks out to me is that um, that so many that this person is saying so many abortions are done out of convenience, which to me is that get out of jail free card. It's like it's just not convenient for me to have a baby right now. So let's just you know, can you get rid of it and you know. If that's not for you to say whether it's convenience or what may look like convenience. Mm -hmm. There may be some underlying issues you, you just don't know about. There may be an abusive domestic relationship that a pregnancy would, you know, would um, exacerbate. Um, you just don't know everyone's story. And so you need to give people the benefit of the doubt. If you yourself don't believe that abortion is right, then don't have one. Encourage your children not to have one. And and do everything all, you can to but as a professional you need to understand mm -hmm. people have all kinds of backstory that you don't know about mm -hmm. um, that, yeah something else too but um you know any reason or no reason that you have the right to this and you can do it for a good reason a bad reason or no reason at all i think we start getting into a really um iffy area when we start adding exceptions to everything um you know, when we say like, oh, it's not okay unless it's this, it's not okay unless it's this, unless it's this. At some point, I feel like, like, why don't we just focus our, if you don't like it, let's focus all of our efforts on preventing it in the first place. Because I will tell you that most of my young people that came to me and had an unplanned pregnancy thought they were being safe and they just had no idea. Like they were taking birth control the day that they tangoed in the sheets and that's it like the day of and like thought that that was fine or had no idea plan b existed or had you know i've had patients tell me that they thought that their boyfriend told them that if they gave them a little bit of help beforehand um the second time they're out of sperm you can't get you pregnant. You eat it all up before. Yeah. yeah, you eat it all up beforehand. And then here's a, here's a life lesson, kids. There's always more sperm. Yeah. So like the <laughs> lack one out. <laughs> exactly. So like why don't we really fund education surrounding that? Yeah. But then that's if you really that. don't want abortion to be as, as common as it is, then your efforts you can't legislate this kind of stuff. It's a social question. And you should be very much involved in getting quality sex education in schools, age appropriate at all levels, making birth control available and affordable, um, um, you know, all of that to try to prevent it in the first place. There you go. There's your first What do you want? There's what? There's always more sperm? sperm? <laughs> I would sell a million of those in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> It has so many nuances in so many different yeah. categories. Did I blow your monetization already? <laughs> oh, worth it if it's for that. Um, yeah, Birdie, great argument for um, better and more inclusive uh, sex ed. I totally agree. Um, I did not have that growing up. And um, I, yeah, yeah, I'm just, we're here. We made it. <laughs> um, I thought we didn't have that at all. A tiny side tangent. I thought that getting your period happened like when you had enough like secondary sex characteristics, shall we say. And my friend literally told me, she's like, well, once you get body hair down there and you have a certain amount, that's when your bladder fills up with blood and you pee it out. And now you can have babies. And I was like, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. That's that's totally normal, and I accept this. So that's what we're, and that's what people are going out into the world with. It's, it's like that understanding. And the boys um, need it too, because you know somebody's fathering these these pregnancies. Somebody's providing half of the DNA. Yeah. To these pregnancies. And that's the other thing. Like, are you going to? You're have not off the hook, although yeah. uh, many men think they they can be and should be. But you know, there's such thing as child support, and um, you should have to start paying it during pregnancy then. No, apparently it's a child already. So yeah, yeah, if you think life begins at conception, then you should be paying for 
rent, um, all sorts of things for like all of the prenatal appointments. When I had my uh, second child, she was $13,000 to have her. So please be forking that over. My mom likes to tell the joke about, was it, well, my mom, who had twins? I mean, my mom had twins for sure, but somebody's, t oh, my mom did tell the story. Her insurance covered, this is back in 1970, the insurance covered one baby. So Renee came out for free and Becky cost $600. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, co-pays. Yeah, they can pay co-pays. Yeah, that's, I love that. Did she like the one that um, was free, your bonus one better? Um, I should not comment on any of that in public. Okay. <laughs> I'm her favorite, of course. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Um, child support at the point of conception will be the next U.S. Supreme Court case. Yeah, I doubt that's, there's a lot of men on that. They, they will not be going for that. They're not trying to. Um, I do not think people in Washington, D.C. would like to pay for all of the um, babies that they might have helped make that aren't necessarily. Claimed. The other side of parental rights and and paternal rights, somebody I think may have touched on this in the chat, I can't find it, but um, there are times when a woman is impregnated uh, by force and or by a family member, and then that male person wants parental rights. Mm -hmm. And that's horrific because yeah. that, that connects the abuser with the abuse forever. forever. And that, that's not right. I mean, I'm already outraged that girls and women who are pregnant in that case you know, have to, are now theoretically being forced to go through a pregnancy, even though their young bodies may not really be ready to support a pregnancy. And certainly their minds are already traumatized from the experience. And now this just compounds that, that to me is abhorrent. I just cannot even wrap my head around that. But then to have the sperm donor, as it were, come back and say, hey, I want to be in the baby's life just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blows and my mind. I know, and this would be another thing that I would I'm like and I'm all for father's rights. I mean, I'm gay, yeah. so I'm not, I don't have kids. I'm not worried about getting a woman pregnant. So in a way, I don't have any skin in the game, so to speak. But I mean, um, men in general are kind of left out of pregnancy and childbirth. Oh, and childbirth I'm right there with you. Yeah. And I know people joke about, um, like you mentioned, like having the husband consent before having your tubes tied and, and some things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're right. That's probably going too far. I understand why, but I still think it's going too far. But if a woman gets pregnant and wants an abortion, there's a case to be made to asking the father what his opinion is, since it's it's his baby too, or potential baby. It's his fetus too. Um, he's not the one who has to carry it, so his his opinion is probably not going to, you know, veto her opinion. But you know, I think more thought needs to be given to the men that are involved in these processes. Hmm. But situations like this no if it's by force yeah that disqualifies you from yeah any of that yeah. automatically and that's interesting because that's where we differ but mostly because i which is fine by the way um you don't have to agree with me to be on this channel <laughs> um, i do want like different opinions that's literally why i bring, bring people on um i view it mo very differently not in like a anti-paternal right but more of um, I view it totally differently, but I'll talk about that in my other video. Mostly, well, like, I'm not, I don't want anyone to go away saying, "Oh, Scott says men should be should have to approve." Oh no, no, care. I don't think you're saying that at all. I but totally understand. You're saying that yeah. it's completely the woman's choice because it's completely the woman's body. Mm -hmm. But there may be a, a a man or a person with who produces sperm. It's hard for me to use that language. I'm trying so hard, guys. I'm an old guy. Um, it may be there may be a person that has a vested interest in that decision. That's all I'm saying. Not that you should listen to him or he should decide, but that's all I'm saying is just to realize. Yeah. Who no, and that's what it's all for. The stakeholders. I'm writing a lot yeah. of papers for grad school, and they always ask about stakeholders. And I yeah. Think I'm like, <laughs> Please tell that. me about your stakeholders. Um, yeah. So who's uh, your stakeholder in this pregnancy? I mean, that's not a bad question. I'm the primary stakeholder here. Um, the primary, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Without doubt. Without question. <laughs> yeah, no, but I totally know it. I know what you mean. We won't call her the mother. We'll call her the primary stakeholder. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, it shall be said. Um, and yeah, like I completely would understand that men would experience grief of that too. I think I have a lot of feelings surrounding how we involve partners in pregnancy. And I think we do a, an abysmal job, especially around like pregnancy loss, um, especially when it's things like miscarriage, like when 
it wasn't, um, or even if they have to have an abortion because like in order to like a compassionate, you know, if your baby is going to not be born, like they're going to pass when they're born, like anything, anything where you really wanted that child. And I don't think we do a good job with partners. It's much more focused around the mom of, um, or the pregnant person to be like, oh my gosh, this is happening to you. And we don't really pay attention to partners, even postpartum. Like it's just kind of overlooked like, oh yeah, like how's Liz doing? Like, I don't think anybody ever asked how Joe was doing with our colicky wild child where no one was sleeping and everything was angry. <laughs> we have a lot of room to improve here. Let me see. That, oh, I'm trying to see um, who, if we have a different, and I think someone had pointed out um, that I think it was CK medic because earlier people were quoting statistics of who, how many people have an abortion and for what reasons. Um, and I, oh yeah. Um, sexual assault is overwhelmingly underreported whether or not pregnancy is involved. So I think statistics on the origin of a pregnancy are necessary. Um, like, and I agree with that. I think like, I can't even tell right. you the number people I've heard a common argument of, um, I think this is something that we do need to ask for specification about in our legislature and let your legislator know, however you feel about it. You know, I'm not here telling you which way to say it, but I do think we need some kind of specification because this is a really big gray area for healthcare providers, especially when they, it's a very, very young person, uh, because most people do not report sexual assault. Most people until if they ever do much later. So like plan B isn't an option. I know people are always like, oh, like just take plan B. Usually people don't because it's usually someone they know and they're not in a safe situation or they don't even think, you know, they aren't, that's not the headspace that they're in. It is incredibly underreported, incredibly. So I wouldn't, I do not think that the statistics just from my experience, which isn't obviously everyone's, um, saying that it is 95% out of like irresponsible convenience. I, I do not. The most, the people who most often have them are people who are already parents, um, who already have children, like who just cannot, who it's not going to work. So that's my soapbox on that. Let me see. I'm trying to go back and find, um, the good fruit melancholy said I would never fail to treat a payment for their needs. It's irrelevant to what my values are. Amen. Um, Melody Nolan said, I see comments saying women are consenting to pregnancy when they have sex because they know contraception is hundred percent. These same men should um, lead a self pleasure movement. Yeah. This, this yeah. argument really, mm -hmm. I mean, that's more going into like abortion. Yes or no. But, um, well, it's a key issue. Sorry, it, you know, it's a, a complicated issue with, you know, consent and birth control and to continue or not to continue the pregnancy and how involved the father will be and if the child be put up for adoption and um, what involvement the grandparents are going to have in a young mother. Oftentimes, the grandparents are, are helping to raise the, the baby. It's, it's all there's all kinds of things to consider in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, let me see. Leticia said, I'm happy you brought that up. Abuse women will never be able to start the healing process when they're forced to have a child. Yep. By those situations. Um, I think the good fruit melancholy, I think is upset that I haven't responded to an email. I think that's where we're going here. Um, I'm really bad at email. So yeah, I probably haven't responded. <laughs> um, I don't check most of my email. I have someone else that does that for me. So if it doesn't get through the filter, uh, it doesn't get through the filter. Um, I apologize, but I'm bad at answering emails. I only have like, I don't have a lot of time. I have a real, a real job. Um, and <laughs> email is very low on my priority. So it's not personal. Most likely it's just that. <laughs> <laughs> I Somebody didn't had a question. And can you buy plan B in the U S I think in most yes. places it still is, but there was there for a minute. Was it CVS? One of the major chains took it off the shelf just because they weren't sure. Was it the major chain? Somebody, somebody, somebody took it off the shelf and then they promptly put it back on. Oh, it was in Kansas City. It was some hospital system in Kansas City or something like that. Got it. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. I know that they're trying to say that it would 
it could not allow, it goes back to the birth control thing of like, well, the primary mechanism is so that you won't ovulate, but what happens if you do? And then it goes back. Um, I assumed, oh, I think. What about not just women, you know, being a healthcare professional, a provider for a woman who is pregnant and doesn't want to be, what about for women who could get pregnant and don't want to be? So, mm -hmm. but you know, and, and you, you can't say, well, if you do get pregnant, you have these, op here's how to prevent it. But if you do get pregnant, these are your options. When one of the big options is no longer an option. Yeah, for sure. Um, it looks like uh, the good fruit melancholy. If you want to be on the channel, that's totally fine. Um, Rachel, if, or what were we calling you? Second opinion. If you want to send her the link to the stream, you are more than welcome to be here. Um, let me see. Who's that? And we can have... Um, I think here wanted to get resource out to folks who I won't reach on my YouTube. Um, we're not going to be like, as long as you want to just have a discussion and not like push, um, you know, we're more just having a discussion surrounding this topic, but if you would like to add to it, absolutely. Um, hi Rhonda. Rhonda's my friend that helped me create this that we're all going to watch again without sound. Everyone enjoy it. Thanks, Rhonda. <laughs> that was my focus point. She's like, Liz, what is your one focus point here? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, Liz, you need to have a focus point. She said it much nicer than that. Um, but <laughs> she was like, you should really know the know the goal. She's a excellent educator. Um, and it was a very good point. So hopefully you all got the point. I want you to talk to your legislators no matter what you want and let them know exactly what you want and that they need to specify it. Otherwise, no one is going to be able to practice because we're all going to be scared they're going to go to jail. Okay? So we don't and want that. Specific, as I understand it, what you want is yeah. them to pass legislation that clarifies exactly mm -hmm. what they mean this to do and, and what it does not apply to, which is if they want it to be a no get out of jail free law, then say that. Yeah. But then specify that these other and, and they're going to need a lot of consultation with medical professionals. You encourage them in your email to get talk to actual providers and and find out what these what all these problems we're talking about are and then craft a law that makes it clear for practitioners what they can and cannot do so that they don't have to guess about potentially going to prison for doing what they do yeah exactly. I, I just don't want to go to jail <laughs> <laughs> It's the bottom line here. Um, good fruit melancholy. Um, I will, I will look for your email friend, um, and see if you want to go on a future panel discussion. Um, don't want to push anything. That's good. <laughs> um, really wanted to share some option with pro choice side doesn't tend to hear. Um, and I'm all about that. Um, and she's also idea, terrified of the idea of being birth control being limited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and that's good. I think, I don't know. I don't know if, I'm going to put out that video on kind of like the, my counter argument to most of the pro-life, I guess, stances. Um, adoption I saw thrown around in here a lot. Uh, and I, I just, I, well, I have thoughts. You'll find them there. But I, it could be an interesting discussion. I just don't have it in my soul today. Um, by who said Kate. Thanks for being here. Um, I have anxiety if my emails hit 50. I don't know how you do it. Thousands, thousands. I literally look for the ones with the caps lock. Um, <laughs> I'm like, well, that seems important. Or that like, don't take a lot of mental energy. I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, horrible, horrible an email. Uh, all right, let's see. If we're going to require women to have babies, we should shore up resources for them too. This could be another thing that we could write to our legislators about and see like, hey, you know, now that we've done this, here's, let's specify, first of all, what's okay and what's not okay. And also, what are you planning on implementing now that we have vote, like done this? Um, because I think we can all hope for better resources for pregnant people and postpartum people because it's miserable in the United States. Absolutely miserable, um, absolutely miserable. And Sean, uh, Jean, I agree. <laughs> it all goes back to a lot of like, well, if you want to have sex, then you need to deal with the repercussions of them. Like, oh, that's a lot of purity culture. Well, how dare they refer to it as a, a baby as a repercussion? Yeah. Like, you know, 
that's a lot of your punishment of, is you will have a child. So yeah, that reminds me harshly of uh, raising it for the next eighteen years. Yeah, it sends You're me back to youth group days when they told you you were chewed gum if you did anything before you were married. Do you want to be chewed gum? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a lot of uh, a lot of purity You're coming in there. Um, the law really needs to come back to the availability of equal health so that medical professionals can provide options without moral or religious implications. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, I mean, people have been deciding how to me for me how I do my job for years. Insurance companies have largely dictated how I do my job. So I guess now the government just gets to do it too. So that's fun. <laughs> well, that is the challenge, I guess. I mean, I've, I have not been yet in that provider role, but, um, you know, doing less with more. We do that all the time in the ER. You know, patient came in with CHF and she needs to be on a diuretic, but she's homeless. She has no place to pee. So of course she's not going to take her diuretic. And you're like, well, what can we do instead? Can we try to, you know, short of putting a Foley catheter in you, what can we do to, you know, that's just the nature of healthcare. And sometimes patients can't afford things. They don't have access to things. They're too far away. They don't want their somebody, somebody to find out, you know, and you just, the point is to get creative, but this is a real hurdle. This yeah. is a real, real big hurdle. That we need to fix. Yeah, because Juju, you're right. Um, just saying don't have sex and I keep saying that's going to work. Yeah, the, the hormones are strong. Um, and that goes back to the people who were very, very much like, wait till marriage. And I'm like, I took care of your pregnant child who's <laughs> definitely not married <laughs> very recently. <laughs> like, um, it's happening. Uh, even even if you don't know it's happening, it's happening, my friend. It's so hard for this country to get wrap its head around the fact that sex is natural and good and happy and fun. And, you know, it's all, you know, we even refer to it as, you know, being naughty. You know, mm -hmm. can like, be fun for naughty. women. And, Wait, what? And women get to enjoy it too. What? No, what? Oh God, we're just no. uteruses. We're just uteruses, please. No, you're, you're these non-sexual Madonnas. You know, the Madonna whore thing. You know, a woman is one or the other. She's either mm -hmm. the motherly figure or that she's considered a slut. If she's mm -hmm. involved in any kind of sexual activity. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yep. The double standard is ridiculous, but the idea is ridiculous. too. Yeah. I'm just a walking womb with a halo because I'm a nurse. So I'm also an angel, in case you mm -hmm. didn't know. So I'm a big fag because I'm a man who's a nurse. <laughs> Sometimes a stereotype. Thing, so. It's rough. It is rough. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, law needs to come back. Oh, did we already say this? Yes. Perfect. Good. Um, my second opinion helps me highlight things. She's like, I think this would be a good thing to talk about. And then I forget. Rhonda says, thank you for hosting a session that is not about where people stand on the issue of abortion, but a topic all of us need to think through as our healthcare system is going to be impacted. It is. It really is. So please tell your legislatures what you want and why it's important. So we'll just say that 12 more times. I think we're going to wrap up very shortly. Anything else you want to add, Scott? I'm just noticing we came up with a lot of questions and not a whole lot of answers. I mean, yeah. not that surprises me. It shouldn't surprise me. No, I don't, because yeah. I don't, yeah. It's not, like, I mean, this, it's not like you or anyone in the chat can say, okay, well, when you get a patient who doesn't want to be pregnant and abortion is illegal in your state, here's what you do. Mm -hmm. No problem, easy. Yeah. That's not yeah. realistic to accept that, but, you know. And I think people aren't going to want to touch it with a 12-foot pole because they're not going to want to go on the internet and tell people how to get around it, which is a lot of what I've seen in my, like, mm -hmm. nurse practitioner community is people being like, we can't even share workarounds because we don't want people to know about the workarounds, you know what I mean? Because then they're going to come and target the workarounds, but that's how most people are now learning, right? Is by help getting, you get a lot of information from podcasts, a lot of your continuing ed, like your school certainly isn't gonna be able to be like, here's how we're gonna get around this. Like it's gonna just be yeah. a mess until yeah. we figure out better. Just to make this point again, Hash, um, Hashirama, um, it's not stopping you from going to another state to have an abortion, but finances will. And explaining to your family where you've gone. Or if you're 13, how are you just going to be like, I'm going to go, like, how are you going to go? Yeah. How does that? That's true. For people 16, 16, so that's fine. And yeah. if there's a national ban at, at some point, then Canada and Mexico are available for people with the means. But um, if it were only that simple. 
Yeah. Perfectly. What about if you have a bunch of other kids and you want, you need to go have one? Like you can't just leave. Um, that is very much a statement coming from a lot of like privilege that this could happen. Um, yeah, you're but, right. We are in shock. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really, thank you for addressing all of this. You're welcome. I wasn't trying to attack you earlier. Um, I'm very grumpy today um, and hostile for reasons outside of this. So I apologize if I came off harsh. <laughs> should have warned everyone. Usually when I'm in that mood, I, I warn everyone up front. I was like, this is ironic that I had already scheduled to talk about this today because I have big feelings about things in my personal life. Um, apologizing for monotonizing. You didn't monopolize it. Um, I love to talk to you. Great job. Yes. Please send that. Um, put caps lock in your title. <laughs> I might be able to find it. Um, and my uh, second opinion, Rachel, go look for it <laughs> because good Ness, Rhonda knows. Rhonda and I work together and she has to text me, use Google chat and email me <laughs> to get me to respond. And now she just says, respond, please respond. And then I'm like, okay, okay. And Liz, so, by the way, you're allowed to have feelings. Yes, outside. absolutely. And focused and, fabu <laughs> yeah. focused and fabulous. Um, thank you for this discussion as a nurse midwife. I'm still in shock. And if you ever want to be, um, she has a great YouTube channel too, um, that I've followed for years. If you ever want to be in one of these discussions, uh, comment at me, email me, send me a message on Instagram, all of the above. And I might get the message. <laughs> we might be able to do it. Um, but I would love to, you'd have you in on these discussions if you would love to be in them. Um, because I followed you forever. She was one of the first people that messaged me back when I had like, I had nobody. And I was like, oh my gosh, you talked to me. And so in my mind, like you are a celebrity and I hope you know that. Um, so nurse midwife people, if you need someone, great YouTube channel. Um, Scott's YouTube channel, also great um, for nursing and future NP things. I'll leave that link down below. Um, go check his channel out. He's doing me a favor by being here. Um, if you like this video, like it. We're at the spamming part of this programming today. Um, and that tells, it raises the vital signs of the video and tells YouTube that we should share it with other people. Okay, excellent. Um, let me see, San Francisco is <laughs> fabulous. We're all allowed to have a bad, bad day. <laughs> I have a lot of bad days. <laughs> a lot of feelings. <laughs> There's a lot of feelings. <laughs> inside. Um, yeah, going out of state is not the answer. Um, Planned Parenthood is adding a location to the border. Um, yes, like, comment, share, please YouTube gods. Anything else chat? I told myself we would end at 415. So you have any other comments, we have two minutes, sneak them in. And if not, that's just like the, uh, the Planned Parenthood in St. Louis, Missouri, in my hometown has moved across the river to um, Illinois, just across the river. So they're trying to keep it close. And there is someone of uh, North, they did a story on TV about North Carolina and, or um, North Dakota and Fargo is jumping the, the river into Minnesota so they can stay in the area. Oh, really? Operate legally. Oh my gosh. I was, more. North Carolina came out in support of abortion. I was blown away. I mean, I guess. Really? Like the governor is, um, that doesn't shock me because the governor is pretty liberal. Uh, but the state is not. So I don't really know how that happened. Um, but, <laughs> but I was blown away this morning. I was like, what? Um, let me see. Duck Tar said, what about this compromise abortion is legal up to 20 weeks and less health of the mother, but that says the law. It's not the law anymore. Um, that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. It used to be the law. Now it's not the law anymore. All right, friends, thank you for joining this discussion. Thank you for keeping it civil. I didn't have to boot anyone, and that was 0% my expectation. I thought we were going to have to be like, pew, 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 like getting rid of people like bonkers, um, and I didn't. So I appreciate this. Uh, you are some great people, uh, and I'm glad we can have conversations like this. We might even be able to have conversations if we want to have them about maybe about it just in general after I post um, kind of my side, like how I kind of view it. If anyone is interested in that, let me know, or are we over it? Like, have we hit the point where we kind of, everyone has their opinions, no point in talking about it. I do think we might be able to have maybe a conversation about it. Maybe. What do you think, Scott? You know, if it's respectful, like this, this yeah. conversation was, there are good points to be made on both sides. And I have had conversations primarily with my mom, but 
you know, with people on both sides. And if they're willing to listen to the other side, and then I, I think it can be done. Yeah. Before so. we go, are you, um, you going to let me um, advertise anything that I need? Oh, please do. Please well, do. last time I said I was single, and I was joking. I mean, I am single. Oh, no. I mean, by all means, yeah. <laughs> I have, um, I'm at, what am I, Nurse Scott YT, no, Nurse Scott Vids at gmail.com. It's on my YouTube channel. If you have any any advice for me as a uh, nurse practitioner student, any advice on getting preceptors in a clinical uh, for a clinical experience or anything else that might help me on that journey, please, please chime in. And our suggestions for topics you want to see me cover on my my YouTube channel. Yeah. And if you ever want to have those conversations over there, let me know and we can do a, like a little collab. Um, not that I have all the knowledge, but you sure know your, I can your videos were very helpful to me while I was considering whether or not to go back and kind of what okay. to expect. And so I'm trying to kind of pay it forward. And so that's why I did the last video that I did. It's like, what do I know I can share with the world? I love writing papers. And I think people oftentimes, I know, I know, you know, I'm weird. This is another I way. I thought we'd weird. be becoming friends, but this is, this is where I we know. depart. It's been Little fun. did you know I was an alien. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I thought, well, I'll pass that along and, and people thinking about going to grad school can you know, find out how scary is a, a, a term paper in grad school. Yeah. It's, it doesn't have to be. I don't know. You can do it. You can so do the I hard appreciate your, your, your videos on those kinds of topics. And I'm trying to do a little of the same thing. I know. I think everyone kind of is confused. I made a lot of those. And now I'm like, I'm going to talk about now things and I'm going to rant a lot. Okay, buckle up. Let's go. <laughs> You're allowed to change, change gears and change lanes. Well, what happened is I wasn't employed anymore. So I could talk about whatever I wanted without worrying about is my employer mm -hmm. going to find out and get mad? So, whoops, <laughs> that's what happened. Oh um, no, a woman with opinions. I know. I, oh, Watch North out. Carolina, that was not okay. <laughs> 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 Goodness gracious. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, friends, let me know in the comments um, if you do want to have another conversation and maybe I'll put it up on the thing, kind of just discussing it, like I said, or are you over it? Um, the point of that one would be to be able to just understand other people more because we can't have conversations about anything if we think the other side is just a demon from hell. And that is kind of a lot of the times the vibe. We obviously have to have, uh, um, you know, conversations about this. Um, and yeah, okay, here's my new, uh, um, so you're, oh, clicking the wrong one. So Scott's new merch is there's always more sperm and mine is opinions in a womb. <laughs> scary. Opinions in a womb, scary. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Love it. All right, friends. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being respectful and just offering a good community. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I want you to do the affirmation that I live for. Oh, I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> if this video was helpful, do, you know, do all the things. Share it with people who you think might need to listen to it. Go talk to your state representatives and just tell them you want clarification on what this means and what it doesn't mean so that your healthcare providers can actually give you health care and are not scared of going to jail for doing so. And always, always, always remember, you, my friend, are more than enough. You are not alone, and you can do hard things. Bye, friends. Let's do the end screen, if I can find it. This needs music, too. We can just talk over it <laughs> for right now. But we'll find music. It'll be great. We'll see you next time. You want me to hum? <laughs> we'll see you next time <laughs> on Liz Has a Lot of Feelings. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And maybe a, a late night Liz sometime. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>